Dr. Rezul Bagarov. Um, thank you very much, Professor Moore. Um, and uh, as you said, from uh, Uganda, we're moving to Pacifica, to Samoa. Uh, for this particular talk, I've chosen the topic of the outbreak to describe what happened in Samo and most importantly to learn some lessons from this, which I believe extend far beyond um, Samo and could be applied perhaps elsewhere. <clears throat> I will, um, this is a content of my presentation. Uh, we'll start with a short video clip just to introduce to the country as well to see what it looked like during the outbreak, uh, as including the response. Uh, of course, uh, some words about Samoa, uh, but uh, specifically fo uh, focusing on the uh, immunization rates before the outbreak. Uh, then, of course, I need to present the outbreak itself uh, with the response, and then we will end up with the lessons. So I would like to uh, play a video now, and uh, can we please have it? Thank you very much. I'll, I'll get back to my slides. Um, so yeah, this clip was just um, to show uh, kind of in a picture, special way, uh, what has happened and how important vaccination is. But let me uh, give a few more words about the outbreak in Samoa and of course about the country. Uh, particularly for those who come not living in Pacifica in this region, uh, Samoa is a, is a small uh, island country um, uh, consisting of two main islands, uh, Savai and Apollo. Uh, you see the population is relatively small. Uh, it's big actually for the island countries, but it's, it's small, it's uh, under 200,000. But importantly, uh, many Samoans living also in New Zealand, the United States and Australia, uh, as well as American Samoa. Um, country got independence in 1962. It's upper, in, upper middle income country. Uh, with majority population living in the rural areas. I can talk more about, of course, how beautiful Samoa is, but 
uh, let us focus on the immunization rates and the uh, pre before the before the outbreak. Uh, this simple slide just shows uh, the um, uh, what uh, last 18 years uh, the rates, uh, particularly for measles containing vaccines one and two. One in yellow, uh, blue is uh, um, is uh, uh, second dose of vaccine, and just for comparison, DTP at, on, on the top. You will see that uh, rates were not really constant uh, all these years. They were ups and downs, particularly there was some big improvement between 2010 and 2014, and then uh, the rate was sliding down for uh, uh, measles vaccines. But uh, you will see that in 2018, there was uh, quite a drop uh, in the immunization rate. And that was for a particular reason, because in the middle of that year, we somehow experienced uh, two uh, adverse events following immunization. It happened due to the uh, MMR vaccination on two babies, um, 12 months old, in the, in the same rural uh, district facility uh, where they use uh, from the same vial, uh, they were vaccinated and they died uh, roughly within one hour from each other. Um, of course, this is a huge event uh, for the country. Immediately the vaccine was suspended and investigation started. Um, this is the timeline of the events. Uh, so M MMR was suspended across the country uh, from the very next day and investigation started, which continued in fact for, for, for quite some time. Uh, for nine months, uh, MMR was suspended as investigation was still looking at the clues. Of course, the first thing to suspect is vaccine itself, whether it's, um, you know, good quality, whether it's not expired, whether it was properly stored or not, and so on. But the, the investigation arrived in the conclusion that it was due to the human error, what we call administrative um, uh, mistake or error, uh, due to the, uh, uh, it was two nurses who was implicated uh, mixing um, wrong uh, vial with uh, diluent. Um, they were sentenced uh, later in the, in, uh, in, the, in the middle of uh, 2019, uh, but uh, it was very important that even when MMR restarted in, in April 2019, uh, the uptake levels was very low because of people were still uh, not trusting the system. In the meantime, <clears throat> New Zealand, which is a neighborhood of, of Samoa, experienced their own outbreak, uh, which started early that year, continued throughout 2019. And uh, traffic between New Zealand and Samoa is very intense because of, as I mentioned earlier, there are communities of Samoa uh, living in New Zealand. So it just took some time for someone to come and introduce the measles uh, here on the islands uh, of Samoa, um, with numbers growing steadily for in September, uh, where government uh, now pronounced uh, outbreak on 16th of October. The still situation was not, was still getting worse day by day. Uh, and in one month, uh, despite the, some measures, including uh, supplementary vaccination, situation was getting worse. So in the mid of, of 2015, uh, sorry, 2019, uh, mid of November, the government moved to the state of emergency, trying to vaccinate every single person who is older than six months old and younger than 60 years old. And uh, that measure was actually effective by the end of the 2019, the, uh, the epidemic subsided and state of emergency was lifted. So this is uh, um, uh, the epic curve for the, for the epidemic, uh, both by onset date and notification date. You will see this is a, this is a relatively classy uh, curve in the sense that it was just going up and reaching the highest numbers toward the end of November and then subsiding uh, shortly after toward the end of the year. Uh, this is basically a summary table which uh, brings all the numbers together as to with the toll uh, of, uh, of this tragedy in Samoa. Uh, you will see that um, altogether uh, uh, more than 5,000 people were, were infected with unfortunately we lost 83 lives in Samoa. More signif significantly also that most of these deaths came to the group of children under five years old. Uh, remember that MMR was suspended for nine months. Uh, and also before the, before the outbreak, there was already uh, numbers were sliding down. So that, groups were, that particular group was particularly susceptible to disease. And uh, 
Um, this is not surprising that if you look at the attack rate and case fatality rates, they are much high in this uh, uh, age group category. So Samoa, as I mentioned, is a small country with uh, limited uh, resources um, to respond. So at some point, the government called uh, WHO to help with to bring uh, what we call EMTs, emergency medical teams. And they, come, they came from around the world. Of course, the, the countries like New Zealand in the first place and Australia provided the, the major support to, to some all. But, but teams also came from as far as Norway and, and Israel. Uh, as well, we have uh, even the Pacific Island countries like Kiribati, French Polynesia and Papua New Guinea, Papua New Guinea also came to the rescue. We had more than 500 uh, foreign employees uh, over two months time in Samoa, and most of them are nurses. They play a huge role, tremendous role in, in the lifting out Samoa out of this uh, uh, problem. And uh, the range of activities were happening, of course, measles case management was the most important one, but vaccination came shortly after with mental health support as well. You will see that uh, on the, at the bottom of this slide, you will see that 95% of eligible population was vaccinated within a very short period of time. Uh, this is a supplementary uh, MR vaccine. Uh, and as I mentioned, and this is basically a summary of that slide, that almost everyone got a shot. 98% uh, of eligible population was vaccinated at the time, and this is by category and groups there. So government decided to move boldly to, to prevent uh, this event from happening uh, in Samoa. And in December 2019, there was a parliament session uh, where within one day, they quickly amended the Act, uh, Infant, Amend Infant Act, by introducing what they call mandatory vaccination, by legitimizing um, uh, immunization uh, as prerequisite for the enrollment into school, with quite heavy fines for those who are trying to avoid this legislation. Um, again, I'm not going into details of uh, pluses and minuses of mandatory vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, voluntary vaccination, but nevertheless, that was also uh, widely supported within society. And as a result, we know that uh, the rates of immunization, particularly this year, the first quarter of, of this year, is, uh, shows how that immunization rates are really back to what they're supposed to be. So again, as I said, that uh, I particularly would like to focus on the lessons from this because they extend uh, far beyond Samoa. So first of all, you know, allowing to, uh, the immunization rate to slide, even this is, uh, to some extent, it's already creating a problem because it's creating some groups of sus uh, susceptible population. Then, of course, this unfortunate event uh, in 2018 where MMR was suspended for nine months due to investigation, due to these adverse events, created another challenge that for some time, uh, uh, basically more than one of cohort of children was missing vaccination altogether. Plus, of course, when it was restarted uh, after nine months, again, the uptake was low as, uh, as the mothers and, and parents were not really trusting the system. Um, then uh, I also mentioned that when you have uh, outbreaks in neighborhoods, somewhere neighborhood, you need to be particularly vigilant. You need to be particularly be very uh, careful with surveillance. Uh, and uh, because the introduction of, of infection uh, could happen any time at a time. And uh, is, as I said, that it was uh, most likely was due to the traveler from New Zealand. And last but not least is the anti-vaccination campaigners have also was become quite active in Samoa around that time where the adverse event happened. They just felt like that this is a good time to really make noise. So they came in boldly, both online and in country, start, starting, you know, again, creating additional uh, stress on the system and pushing the parents to withdraw their children from being vaccinated. So this is a very important additional source. But, and this is probably the most important lesson that, that I would like to bring, is that vaccines work. Because what we have clearly seen in Samoa is that, you know, once you have you immunized the whole population, you, you see clearly and quickly subsiding whole, whole epidemic. And you also could see from early days that most people who were really suffering most, affected most, are actually those who've been not vaccinated in the first place. 
So this is a very clear lesson. I think some more have learned this lesson. It's unnecessary, it was preventable, but it was it's what happened. And I think that what we see now uh, this year is uh, routine immunization back on track, MMR back on track. And so that's, uh, that's uh, left, left, of course, a lot of uh, bad feelings, but, but also a teach taught lesson to, to the people. And, and I think this lesson is really important, not only for Samoa, but far beyond Samoa. So thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak.